it seems like a, a man of your intelligence and expertise, it seems like syndication is like you move up, 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 up. And that's like the, the top level where you're buying like $10 million, you know, Grant Cardone type deals where the deals just get bigger and bigger. So I'm just curious, why, why don't you play in that really big syndication space or do you? Hello, and thanks for joining us today. I'm really excited you could be here because today we're talking about one of my favorite topics, which is real estate investing. We're talking about my topic is even more favorite than that, how to get the money, private money that you need to be able to do real estate investing. I mean, we brought the GOAT, the guru on to talk about this topic today. With us is Jay Connor. Now, Jay's a national speaker on the topics of private money, business automation, automating your real estate business and foreclosures. Now he's known as the private money authority and has raised two over $2 million in private money in less than 90 days when the banks refused to loan him even a dime. Now he's also the best-selling author of where to get the money now. And he's a leading expert on private lending, marketing, and business development as well. Jay, thanks for joining us today. Hey, Ty, I uh, appreciate you inviting me on here, and I'm so excited to talk about my favorite subject, which is private money and private lending. You literally just you wrote the book on this. Actually, you just have a new guide that maps it all out. Can you show that? Because we were just talking about that before. Absolutely. I'm awesome. so excited. I just finished writing this new private money guide, and it's titled Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket and Explode Your Real Estate Business and help you build incredible wealth. I mean, this guide will get anyone that's looking for money for the real estate deals on the fast track, experience what I did. And that is when I first started using private money in 2009, I've never missed out on a real estate deal for not having the funding. That's awesome. And how much is that going to cost our audience? $10,000? Oh, I don't know if your audience can afford this. How about a big capital F-R-E-E? -E? It's free. I love it. So for everybody watching, if you're going to stick around to the end of this, we're going to show you how to get this for free. And that is like the Bible on everything you need to know about why private money can help you blow up your real estate empire. So let's talk about that. Why is private money so powerful in the real estate game? Wow. Well, there's a long list of reasons, so I'll start out with the big ones. First of all, I guess I should define what I mean by private money. So I'm not talking hard money. I'm not talking hard money lenders. I'm not talking brokers. I'm not talking about institutions. I'm not talking about banks. Private money is when you, as a real estate investor, whether it's for single family houses, commercial deals or whatever, borrow money from individuals, from human beings, just like you and me. Private lenders are individuals that are loaning money from their investment capital and or their retirement funds. There's a big subject right there. Right there, you need to learn about self-directed IRAs. But anyway, we're doing business with individuals. And so the, the benefits to using private money, uh, well, when are you going to use it? When all cash is required by the seller which in the real world is the majority of the deals. Yes, we negotiate with sellers and off-market uh, sellers, you know, creatively, seller financing, buying subject to the existing note. But 87% of those off-market sellers require all the cash. And of course, anything in the multiple listing service is going to require cash. So doing business with these private lenders, one ben big benefit is that it puts you, the borrower, the real estate investor, in the driver's seat. You see, there's no application process. Your credit score has got nothing to do with how much money you can get. Your verification of income has got nothing to do with how much money you get. You see, the private lender does not make the rules. You make the rules, right? So we as the borrower, we set the interest rate. We set the frequency of payments. We set what's the maximum loan to value going to be because it is a program that we are teaching to other people. And now they're chasing us. Let me tell you, Ty, since I started using private money in February 2009, I've never asked anybody for money. They're like, when I teach them what the private lending program is now, they're chasing me. And so the benefits put you in control. Number two you always bring home 
a big check when you buy the property and you never take any of your own money to the closing table. You think that might help your cash flow? So, I mean, it's very common when I'm buying a house here in my small area of only 40,000 people, I bring home a thirty, forty, fifty $50,000 check when I buy and don't take any of my own money to the closing table. Now, the reason that works is, first of all, I'm buying the properties at deeply discounted prices. I mean, I'm not going to bring home a thirty, forty, fifty $50,000 check when I buy a house unless there's going to be some type of rehab involved. And so fixes the cash flow problems. I mean, with private money, there's a hurry to pay it back like hard money, right? Uh, I mean, the term is typically two to five years and we can pay off early with no penalties. And so, you know, when I first started using private money, my business tripled the first 12 months after using private money because I didn't miss out on any deals and I could pick and choose the ones that I wanted. So no credit. I mean, your credit's got nothing to do with it. You bring home big checks when you buy. Uh, I get multiple checks on every transaction. and I mean, it just puts me and now we'll put you in the driver's seat and put you in control. Hey, how did you figure this out? <laughs> well, I can tell you, Ty, how I did not figure it out. And how, <laughs> Let's I start mean, there. Let's I start did, with, because everybody else is there right now, right? They're yeah. not figuring it out. Yeah. So I just didn't wake up one morning and say, hey, I think I'm going to raise some private money. No, I, I tell you, Ty, your question reminds me of a big truth. And that is your biggest growth personally, your biggest growth in your business, your quantum leaps always come from a difficulty, from a challenge. Growth takes place in the valley. Growth doesn't take place on the mountaintop. So how in the world did I back into private money? Well, I can tell you, I remember it just like yesterday. It was in January 2009, January 2009, you see the first six years, I started in 2003. So the first six years of investing in single family houses, I relied on the local bank. Well, let me tell you, we still have landlines here in North Carolina, right? And so what, in, what is that thing? A landline, right? Like not a, uh, not a cell phone, but a landline, right? So I remember it like it was yesterday. I picked up my phone in January 2009, and um, I called up my banker. My banker's name was Steve. I had two houses under contract to buy. I'd already been doing business with Steve for six years, and um, I told him about these two houses under contract. The profit was going to be over $100,000 on these two houses, and I learned on that phone call, Ty, like that, that I had no line of credit. My line of credit had been shut down. Nobody had told me. And I said to Steve, what's the problem? I said, I've never been late on a payment in six years. I got an 800 credit score. Why are you cutting me off? He says, well, we're just not loaning money to real estate investors anymore due to the global financial crisis. I didn't know there was a global financial crisis until it happened to me. So now I'm in a crisis with these two deals and no way to fund them. So I hung up the phone and I sat here for a moment and Ty, I tell you what, I had a new mantra come to mind that I've said ever since that moment in time when I hung up the phone from my banker. And that is, and I quote, it's impossible for you to fail unless you choose to quit. And quitting was not an option for me. So I sat here for a moment and then I pick up the phone and I called my buddy, Jeff, who was a real estate investor in Greensboro, North Carolina at the time. I told him what had just happened. He says, well, Jay, welcome to the club. I said, what club? He said, the club of losing your line of credit at the bank. My bank just cut me off last week. I said, well, how are you going to fund your deals? He says, with private money and private lending. And I said, what's that? So I started to learn about private money and private lending. And I put my program together. By the way, don't worry. In the money guide, you're going to learn exactly what my private lending program is that I offer and teach to other people. And uh, so I put my program together and I just started teaching people that I had a relationship with, people I went to church with, in the Rotary Club, my connections, people in my cell phone. I started teaching them what private money and private lending is. And in less than 90 days, 
I was able to raise $2,150,000 in pledges from individuals, from their investment capital and also from their retirement funds. And you know what? I was able to close on those two deals. And since that time, I've never missed out on a deal for not having the funding. In 2011, I started sharing with other real estate investors how I do this. And now I've got thousands of students across uh, the nation that are raising private money just like me. Wow. That's a heck of a story. I love that. I love how like it's that, you know, the word, the best things sometimes come from like the worst experiences. So let me ask you, I have so many questions here, but let's start with your model in general. So you're raising money from individuals and I want to talk more about how that's done. And then you're walking out with checks. So what are you doing with the homes? Because, you know, there's a lot of ways you could invest in real estate. I could buy it. I could Airbnb the thing. I could put long-term renters in it. I could buy it, fix it up and flip it. Are you doing some, all of those? Like what's the main thing you're doing with that property when you get there? Prior to COVID and who in the world had a crystal ball? Certainly I didn't. Who would have guessed what real estate values have done this side of COVID and what's you know happened with the economy and all that? But prior to COVID, I sold a, my exit strategy. About a fourth to a third of my houses, I would sell on rent to own or lease purchase uh, to people that couldn't go to uh, you know, the bank or mortgage company and buy a house. And I did that um, differently than most real estate investors do. So most real estate investors, and I'm not casting any judgment here, I'm just sharing facts. Most real estate investors, when they sell on rent to own or lease purchase, do not help the buyers get ready for a mortgage. They sort of more or less leave it up to the rent to own buyer to get ready. And of course, we know what's going to happen in that case. Less than 5% of them will ever get ready for a mortgage. And they keep that non-refundable lease option deposit and they may go sell the house again. Well, on rent to own, I actually require people to enter into uh, our credit repair program, and over 80% of them actually get a mortgage. So, 25 to 30% of our sales, we did that prior to COVID. But this side of COVID, the high majority, I'm rehabbing the houses, turning them into brand new homes, and I'm putting them in the multiple listing service and selling. And here's why because prices have gone up so much in the past year, year and a half, two years, that it's common for me to make over $100,000 on a single family house. So it's just sort of hard for me to turn down a $100,000 profit on a single family house with a median price now of $300,000. As far as wholesaling deals, I've never wholesaled a house in my life uh, to another real estate investor because there ain't nobody else around here to wholesale it to. I've only got 40,000 people in my market and uh, we do two to three deals a month. But our average profits now are $74,000 per deal that we do. So in answer to your question, Ty, in today's market, um, I'm rehabbing most of the houses into beautiful homes and uh, I'm cashing them out just because there's just so much money to make. Okay, I love it. Next question, where do you find the homes? Because I'm in Tampa Bay. Everything's inflated. And so, like, I, I mean, and there's so many investors, Jay. There's, like, so many people out there fighting for the stuff that's off market or the stuff that can is junk that can be rehabbed that it just seems like it's, it's like, there's saturation, major saturation of investors from my perspective. So, like, where are you finding these homes? Yeah. So my two best sources right now, now I use eight different methods consistently every day, right? I mean, I'm in a small market and I want to dominate the market. If there's a motivated seller that's not in the multiple listing service, well, if they're in the multiple listing service, they're going to get top dollar. So I don't buy out of the multiple listing service, but if there's a motivated seller, I want them contacting me. So let me start with my number one, my number one source. And that is because all the foreclosures have now, the moratorium has been lifted on foreclosures. So I direct mail to every for notice of default uh, once the file is open. And so now about 25% of my deals are coming from people, unfortunately, that are facing foreclosure. And I'm actually able to put money in their pocket. Uh, they ain't going to get the money from the bank, but I put money in their pocket to help them move on with their life. 
My second best uh, source right now are Google ads. Now, I do Facebook ads as well. My Facebook ads are just a picture of me holding a yellow bandit sign standing in front of houses saying I buy houses. Um, so I get Facebook leads every day. But my most valuable leads are Google leads. So why are they so valuable? Well, they're so valuable because those people are looking for us. They're going to Google and they're searching for sell my house fast or buy my house fast and all those types of keywords. So a Google lead of someone looking for us, uh, the real estate investor, is four to five times more valuable than just a, a Facebook lead that shows up in your newsfeed and they see the end and they go, oh, OK, I might be cons I might be interested in selling my house. But when somebody goes to a search engine like Google and is searching for somebody to buy their house fast, that is a hot lead. Listen, Ty, I only need five Google leads uh, from motivated sellers to buy one house. And guess what? It's crazy. I'm only investing 150 close? bucks per lead. Say what, Ty? That's like 20% close ratio. Yeah, but but that's not because I'm so smart. I think it is, but that's because okay. Go those ahead. People, those people are looking for you. They're looking for us. Sure. To and and so one of the one of the secrets, one of the secrets is so I have three different Google sources, uh, service providers that send me Google leads, and all of them I have set up that as soon as they push submit. On the on their uh, on their um, computer, or laptop, or on their phone, immediately my phone rings, my acquisitionist phone rings, and then we're able to hit the button, hit number one on our phone, and now we're calling that seller with less than sixty seconds of them hitting submit. So, I mean, you talk about impressing somebody. Yeah, oh, sure. You go, you go to Google and hit submit, and boom. Whoever you just uh, submitted to is calling you on the phone. That's impressive. Yeah. And statistically, I just looked at this the other day for our sales team. Statistically, you are a hundred times more likely to reach a contact if you call them within five minutes. And the numbers, I mean, like it's staggering how long it takes people days on average day to get back to people. Like it's staggering. And you're calling them quickly. So here's my question. Are you running the Google ads or are you buying the leads from people that are like smarter than us in Google and they're, like they're running I'm, the ads? I'm, well, my team is running the ads. They run the ads. Run and then the you, ads. you get the leads from those ads. And the are lead you, comes straight to us from that ad. Are you looking in your area? Are you just do you just stay in a specific geographic area because you need the contractors to do the rehabs and stuff like that? Yeah, I'm sticking right around here in uh, two counties, two counties uh, right here where I live. So all of your focus of the foreclosures, everything is bam in two counties. Now, Jay, have you found? I'm sure your system works across country. We have students all over the country. But have you found that there's certain areas that are better than not? Because, like, again, I'm skeptical about Tampa because it's so crazy. Like, this, everybody, all this foreign money pours in here. And then, like, with COVID, like, every uh, New Jersey moved here. That's just the whole state. The, every, Jay, everybody in New Jersey just moved to, to Tampa, is apparently yeah. what happened. So, there's so many people that are like, wow, the real estate's so cheap. So, do you find there's certain areas of the country that this works better than others? Well, let me answer it this way. Number one, I don't want to be investing in the big city competing against another thousand real estate investors or whatever it is. I like to go where I sort of own the sandbox. So my most successful students go about 30 minutes to 45 minutes if they're if they're like near a big city. They'll go like 30 minutes or so outside from the big city into the suburbs where you don't have that much competition. And when you can go where there's nothing but competition, you can just dominate the market. Now I've got some good friends that are big time real estate investors and they're right slap dab in the middle of, you know, Metro, you know, whatever, Tampa, you know, Los Angeles, uh, Philadelphia, all that stuff. I like to go out and I like to see my students go out in the outlying areas where they just don't have that kind of competition. Makes sense. Uh, so, but they say somewhat close to them and they, well, you, you advise your students to be able to invest in an area around them. And then they do almost all of it in that area. They just own that area. That's right. 
Okay. Yeah, I do that with land. I have a little county in Nevada and I often say that I own that county. Like if you look at land parcels, like that is my county. I pretty much own like 90% of the land in that county, I believe. And that's always worked really well for me because I know everything about that county and how it operates. Um, Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. So you're fluctuating what you're doing with the property, depending on the market, maybe an Airbnb, if you're in the right place, maybe a, a buy and hold, maybe a flip, maybe a flip. And then how are you building a team to be able to do the work? Do you just start building the relationships, testing contractors out? Do you have a general contractor that just takes over the entire project? Or are you handling a plumber and an electrician and all those type of things? So as far as the rehabs go, I've got two crews that have been with me for 14 years. Uh, and then I also do business with uh, two other general contractors. So I got two general contractors and my own crew. The reason I've got that working like that is because I got so many projects going, just my crew couldn't keep up, right? Yeah. So um, so all the above on that. How do you find good general contractors? Well, it's the same way you find a good real estate attorney. It's the same way you find a good realtor. Uh, it's the same way you find a good home inspector. Um, and that is everybody in the industry, as far as real estate goes, they know the good ones and they know the bad ones, right? So the team members, if someone's brand new and wanting to get started into investing in real estate, there's a few team members that you got to have in place and relationships. Number one is I couldn't be in this business without my relationship with my realtor, right? My realtor, I've been working with the same realtor for 14, no, excuse me, for 18 years, 18 years, the same realtor. He pulls all my comps. He tells me all the after repaired values. And I get all that information in less than 24 business hours. Of course, my real estate attorney is on my team. I've been using the same real estate attorney and firm since 2003. Um, and then contractors, etc. So you're looking for a good realtor? Ask your real estate attorney. You're looking for a good real estate attorney? Ask your realtor. Everybody knows everybody. So, yeah, I mean, I work in this business less than 10 hours a week and I'm doing well. I just cashed out. Uh, I'm annualizing right now about 30 houses and the average profits are, as I said, 74,000. Run those numbers. That works. I'm actually in the business myself less than 10 hours a week. And people ask me all the time, well, Jay, what do you do? I make decisions. So my job is to make sure the marketing funnel is turned on all the time. And I've got consistent every day, every week, motivated seller leads coming into the pipeline. And I make sure my team members have you know, what they need. And I get out of the way. I let other people do what they do best. And I get out of the way and let them do it. Like as far as a house, I may go in a house only two times. Look at it when I buy it. And that's if I'm in town, uh, I for sure, I'm going to have eyes looking at it. My realtor, my uh, my contractor to make sure that we estimate repairs correctly and get the after repaired value right. And then I won't go back into the house until after it's totally finished and, uh, you know, ready for Southern Living Magazine pictures. Um, that's another thing we do. We do awesome music videos, 3D tours music videos of all of our properties when we put it uh, out on the multiple listing service. Do you stage them? We do stage them. And, you know, a lot of my friends say, Jay, why are you you staging houses these days when the market is so hot? Well, here's the deal. It's not because I can't find a buyer. It's because I want the perceived value in the buyer's mind to be equal to or at least up to what I've got it listed at. I list all my houses these days in this hot market at least five to 10% above what my realtor tells me they will appraise for. And I'm getting more cash offers these days and this year than I've ever gotten before on houses. I don't know where all the people are getting the money. Other than this, our current administration has printed more money in the basement of the White House year to date than any other administration before. I mean, right now there's $31 trillion dollars in cash sitting in retirement accounts that can be used for private money. But yes, I still stage my houses. Okay. So we haven't really got to the most important stuff. Um, 
where are these private investors coming from? It's because from my perspective, what you're doing, you, you, you have so much money you're making on these properties that why even bring in private money? It would seem like after you get so far in, you've got so much cash that you could just reinvest the cash. So are you doing that or are you still at the stage that you're in investing in or you rely, not relying, but using a private uh, private network? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm still using private lenders and here's why. I don't want my own cash buried in 20 projects. <laughs> right. <laughs> so and I also uh, invest in other investments as well. I do commercial. I got a I got a free and clear uh, shopping center paid for. So so I spread out my different investments. But, yeah, I'm still using private money. Now, you ask, where do you find these people? Where are these private lenders? Well, here are the three categories of where you find private lenders. Category number one is what I call your warm market. That's people you've already got a relationship with. They're on your list. They're on your email list. They're in your cell phone. They're on your Facebook. And I don't mean your fake Facebook friends. I mean people you actually know and have a relationship with. All your social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, whatever it is that you got a relationship with. So that's one category, your warm market. Second category is what I call your expanded warm market. Well, what in the world is that? Well, I have sometimes people say, Jay, my warm market is broke. I don't know any people with money. Well, first of all, I don't believe them because I think they're just intimidated and don't even know how to start a conversation, which, by the way, I teach that in the private money guide as well. But um, expand your warm market. So I teach how to network, how to grow your network that will attract even more private money to you. And then the third category of private lenders are what we call existing private lenders. These are individuals all across the nation in your backyard that are already loaning money to other real estate investors backed by real estate. Well, how in the world do you find them? Well, I'll tell you three places to find them. First of all, don't do it the way I started. So uh, when I first started looking for existing private lenders, I hired my real estate attorneys paralegal to look for individual names on public record at the courthouse that were loaning money out secured by real estate. Well, in 90 days in my small area, we only found two people. I said, there's got to be a better way. So I hired some very smart software developers and we developed what I call my private lender data feed. Well, what in the world is the private lender data feed? Well, we update it every month. We get every private lender's contact information, how much money they're loaning out, what interest rate they're getting on every private lender loan closed every month across the nation. You can go into my private lender data feed and search by zip code, type your zip code in, find private lenders right in your own backyard. And you may be asking, well, how in the world do I get that private lender data feed? That's all revealed in the private money guide. And then the third place to find uh, private lenders are at self-directed IRA networking events. So a self-directed IRA company, in fact, the one that I do business with is having a great big uh, conference uh, the end of next, or the, actually the end of this month, they're expecting a thousand people at that conference. Well, guess what? 70% of self-directed IRA account holders are wanting to loan money out of their retirement accounts to you, the real estate investor. Imagine what it would be like to network with 700 people that are looking for a place to put their money. And the place to put it is with you and your real estate deals. So those are a few places where you can find existing private lenders. So when you're meeting with them, what's the, the general pitch? What's the elevator pitch? Are yeah. you just pro pitch them on a rate of return or what's the specific set? Right. Well, here's the, the let me start back with the warm market. So people in your warm market, I promise you, 99.9% .9 of people that you know that you got some kind of relationship have never heard of private money and private lending, and they've never heard of self-directed IRAs. One of my favorite ways, Ty, to start a conversation is with three words, and here's a writer downer right here. And those three words are, did you know? I love to start a conversation or just bring that question up in the midst of a conversation. Did you know? Well, how would the rest of that question go? Well, here's an example. 
So let's say you're chit-chatting along with a friend of yours or whatever, and then you say, did you know there's a way that people can earn limited returns on their investment money and their retirement funds tax deferred or tax free? And then you shut up. Of course, they never heard that. They never heard of a way that people can earn unlimited returns a year, either tax deferred or tax free. And they say, no, how do you do that? Well, then you tell them about self-directed IRAs, how they can take a current retirement fund they have and penalty free and tax free, move it over to a self-directed IRA company. And now they can loan the money to you on real estate deals. And there's no limit to the amount of money they can earn per year, depending on the type of retirement account they've got, either tax deferred or tax free. And so that's just one of my favorite ways to start a, a conversation about a person possibly becoming a private lender for me. Pretty phenomenal. And then I imagine a lot of them just continue. Like, I, I, Are you still out looking for them or do you just have such a, a lot of, of them that they the ones you have just in your network fund what you're dealing with? Well, Ty, I've got a big problem right now. I've got more money than I can use. <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> So, you know, I've got about eight and a half million dollars right now uh, that we move from project to project, but I've got about a million and a half of that right now, what I call sitting on the shelf, waiting for a home, waiting to be used. And I promise you, you are going to love having the problem of having more money than you can use than having a house under contract or a real estate under contract and no way to fund it. That's not fun. Jay, um, and, and that makes perfect sense. You, you build that network, and once you start showing them returns, they don't want to stop. They, then the bigger the network builds, nobody leaves in the network. Everybody stays in the network. Well, so they're going to get you know these kinds of high rates of returns safely and securely. I mean, at the local bank, right now, it's about a quarter of a percent for a 12-month certificate of deposit. I come along and pay them 8%. That's 32 times more money than they can get in a CD. I'm curious. So you buy all types of properties, single family, do you buy storage units, mobile homes? I mean, you just have like certain industry or types of properties you stick with. I focus on residential right now. Single, single family residential. Single However, family. if somebody's interested in self storage, I mean, you always typically you're always going to use private money for self storage. Uh, you can use private money for land, private money for commercial, private money for apartments. Um, now, if you're going to do a larger apartment deal, you would want to do what's called syndication, where you would establish a fund and have private lenders invest into that fund, right? Now, what I do is what we call one-offs. So I have my private lenders loan money secured by a house, by a house. So I'm not borrowing unsecured money. They are having their loan to me collateralized buy the house, buy the real estate that's being uh, purchased by my company. So I'm interested, why don't you move to syndication? It seems like a, a man of your intelligence and expertise, it seems like syndication is like you move up, 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 up. And that's like the, the top level where you're buying like $10 million, you know, Grant Cardone type deals where the deals just get bigger and bigger. So I'm just curious, why, why don't you play in that really big syndication space or do you? Uh, I don't, and I'm happy with what I got going on here in my local area. I've, I've got all going on that I want to, while simultaneously, I am just so passionate about teaching and sharing with other real estate investors how I do this. And so the way I do the business is so simple, 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 that anybody can do it. And I can't ethically, in my own mind, continue to teach other real estate investors what's going on unless I am totally active in the market today. So sure. I'm just as active today as I was when I started in 2003. How do I learn from you? What, what products, services, coaching, well, what do you offer that helps somebody like me who's, and by the way, I'm like your avatar. Like, oh my God, I want to buy everything that you have. I mean, I'm really passionate. And, you know, having 700 plus episodes Really rarely do I run into somebody that I'm like, oh my gosh, this makes so much sense. 
And I happen to be doing a lot of research in real estate investing right now. What you say makes a ton of sense from all the people that I know that are really smart in the industry as well. So like, where do I go when I want to learn what options do I have? The great way for us to get connected uh, is to simply go to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R, I'm an E-R, not an O-R. So go to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. That's one word, money guide. Um, you'll be able to download this immediately, get you on the fast track to private money. And once you get the money guide, if you want to connect with me personally even more, then all the information will be in the money guide as to how you can reach out to me and we can work together if you like. Um, as I say, I've got students all across the nation. So I'm, I mean, that's my passion is looking to make a huge impact in your life as a real estate investor. Jay, thanks for coming on with us today. This has been really, really powerful. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, man, this has been honestly one of my top interviews that I've ever done. I just think what you're doing is so brilliant. And now it's a phenomenal time. Like what the market adjusting right now is not such a great time to be able to get in and be able to make really big returns on real estate. So just kudos to what you built and kudos to the fact that you're taking your experience from making money you're in private wealth and you're using it to help others. I just think that that's the coolest thing. So hats off to you. Absolutely. Ty, thank you so much for having me on. Uh, it's been a blast and uh, I've probably been a guest on over 700 podcasts and you're an awesome interviewer, man. Thanks for having me on. All right. Thanks, Jay. So listen, if you're listening and watching this, uh, wow. I mean, I've done a lot of episodes and this is so true. It's so brilliant. Because honestly, what I find, and I talk about this in the business side, is that there's a lot of people that want to invest and get good rates of return. They want a place to put their money where their money is going to give them a rate of return. And so many people have so much confidence in real estate that you could be that person that they invest with and use that to create significant private wealth um, for your family. And also, it's a lot of fun. Anything I've ever done in real estate, it's just so much fun to do. But you have to have a roadmap. I mean, we got to a lot of questions today and it might sound easy when you listen to a 30 minute interview, but the reality is, you know, every one of these one things has 10 things that can go wrong. And this is where, if you go to jayconnor.com forward slash money guide, he'll start to get in and get you the nitty gritty and the details and the more in-depth details that you're truly going to need to succeed. Um, the other part of that is, is that from looking at jayconnor.com, there's a lot of other ways you could go. You can go get his book for free on the website plus free shipping and handling. And then you can even kind of get a little bit more knowledge about Jay as well. But I would start with jayconnor.com forward slash money guy because it's everything you need. And then if you want to take deeper steps with more privatized coaching, et cetera, Jay does offer that. And he'll go through all that with you in the money guide. So make sure you visit jayconnor.com forward slash money guide unless you don't like money. If you don't like money, don't go to jayconnor.com forward slash money guide. But if you do, this could be the opportunity you've been looking for to break into real estate or take the real estate empire that you're building to a whole other level. So make sure you go to jayconnor.com forward slash money guide. Thank you very much for tuning in. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jayconnor.com slash money guide. That's jayconnor.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconnor.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.